Okay, so we have Capella on the left side and uh, my web browser on the right hand side. Uh, the web browser is opened on the publication for Capella website. So uh, very quickly, I will show you that uh, whenever you have a Capella model, you can publish it uh, to the publication for Capella server. So that's how it goes. You enter your credentials if you've not already done so. Uh, and you you need to set some uh, information. So dem demo, uh, oh, sorry, demo model. Okay. Uh, okay, so I need to enter this commit message specifically and uh, the rest is optional. And then, well, I click on finish and I let uh, the tool work. It's sending the data to the server. And that's it. And we'll see, you've just seen here that this uh, description field got refreshed because it, uh, the publication reached the server. So uh -huh. uh, this is the model that has been published. You can see that you find uh, within this uh, uh, web browser all the content of this model as it is in uh, Capella. So uh, you okay. can see the functions and all, all that. Uh, you can, of course, browse uh, the contents of all published models, and you can see the diagrams. The diagrams are clickable. So if I click on the uh, function, I land to the functions page, which gets selected here as well. On every element, I have the semantic browser information that's available here, which is exactly the same as what you have in Capella when you do uh, F9 to display the semantic browser on, uh, on this uh, function. So uh, that's basically it. And well, there are more uh, useful features in, in this uh, product regarding, for example, search. I can search for uh, things in my models. So here's the list of the models that I've published. I want just to look for stuff in the demo project. And let's say I, I want to find something that contains detect, OK? So I search for that. The only thing is the logical function. So that's also one way I can look for uh, something. If I look for something else, OK, I have several objects that uh, contain func. So I will. Uh, I was looking for logical function. I click on it, and then I land to on, uh, on this uh, object's web page. OK, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, also, you can see that every uh, object has a history, so the whole model history is here. I have uh, published this model, made a few tests with the adding and deleting links, and then republished it just a, a few seconds ago. Uh, this is the full history of the model. And for each object, you, you can see the, uh, the subset of uh, commits that are relevant for this object. So the there are two commits that modified this object, the first and the fourth, whereas there are four commits that modified this function detect breaking slippage. So that's useful information that you find here. This is a novelty of the recent versions of publication for Capella. OK, so that's for the browsing feature and publishing features. Uh, now, the uh, other use case that is supported by publication for Capella is related to uh, supporting traceability between your Capella model elements and third-party elements, such as requirements, test cases, and anything else that is exposed in a compatible way by a third-party repository, such as Polarian, for example. So I want to show you the different uh, ways you can create traceability links. The uh, most appreciated one is to do a drag and drop from the Polarian website into Capella. So here is how it goes. I go into the Polarian website. I locate the uh, artifact I want to trace, and I select its URL like that. I drop it on a function, and it gets created in the Capella model uh, like so. This, in this element is not using the requirements add-on. It is our own viewpoint of artifacts traceability because we don't want to limit the traceability with requirements only. We want to be able mm -hmm. also to trace to uh, especially test cases and any other uh, artifacts uh, from the uh, quality management domain because that's quite useful. Uh, people like to tie their 
functional chains and sequence diagrams to specific test cases very often. So that's also supported by the tool out of the box. Okay, so, well, once you have done that, the traceability information is only available in the Capella model here. So you can, uh, you can of course, uh, see uh, as usual in Capella, we have integrated this with the usual tools. So if you select the semantic browser, you can see if I select my function, I see that it has a link satisfies to this artifact. Uh, you can also navigate to this artifact's web page by doing show online on this artifact and it opens the Polarian web, web page. Whereas if you do the same on the function, uh, you will land on the functions web page. Uh, I will just close these for now. Uh, okay, so the traceability information is in the Capella model. I, uh, I will now uh, publish this information online uh, along with all the updates I have made in my uh, model. So. For that, I will publish just as I did earlier, publish to server. It's, it's telling me that I forgot to save. So yes, I want to save before publishing, of course. Then I hit uh, next and I need to add a commit message. So here I want to say that uh, I add a, a, a link to uh, VP429. Uh, I'm lucky I, I'm making very simple commits so I can have an easy message uh -huh. here. That's not always that easy. Okay, the publication has been made. So here is uh, how it looks now in uh, the publication for Capella web page. This has happened, uh, this has uh, appeared. So this is the link between this function, detect breaking slippage and this DP429 artifact. And if you open this artifact uh, online, in, uh, it opens the Polarian web page, and you can see the backlink here from this DP429 to the logical function detect breaking slippage. You also have the preview that's available in Polarian when you put your mouse over mm -hmm. the link, you see the, the preview of this page. So publishing the model has synchronized the traceability information with every repository that can see it, so Polarian, the publication for Capella website, and of course the Capella model still contains this information. It can also be edited elsewhere. So you can create links uh, directly from here uh, by using the uh, usual um, OSLC mechanism. So here I'm, mm -hmm. I'm requesting to select a requirement from Polarian and I can go and select, uh, let's say this one, it's creating the links. Okay, the link has been added, it's here. And, uh, and also, you can uh, edit the information from Polarian. So here I will do uh, the opposite. I will uh, delete the link that we created earlier. So just to clarify, is this detect breaking slippage link? I want to delete it from Polarian. So I need to save that. And this is communicating with the publication for Capella server to delete the link, it's a bit slow because everything's running on my computer along with Zoom, so it takes a few seconds. But you can see that the link has been deleted from the publication for Capella website, as well as from the uh, Polarian website. Okay, so now this detect breaking slippage only has a link to DP428 and no longer to DP429. Okay. This information is available online, but not in the Capella model. And the Capella model is the what we consider the reference that uh, is the source of truth. At any time, the Capella model uh, author can request to get the changes that have occurred online, doing so, update from server. And this is uh, telling us that this link satisfies to DP429 has been deleted and a new link to DP428 has been added. And then the system engineer who's in charge of this model has the responsibility to say, yeah, okay, this, these changes are right or no, I don't agree. These changes are not correct. This should not be deleted. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, let's say that I want to say, okay, I want to retrieve this addition to DP428, but no, I don't want to accept the delete of DP429. I'm doing it like that. And this link remains here, but if I want, uh, I can also request to see the other 
links and I, you can see that this DP428 is also now linked to my function. So this information has been retrieved in the Capella model. Let's put it here. And my Capella model is not quite uh, in agreement with the website because we haven't accepted this deletion. We say that, no, that's not correct. To push that information online, the one way to do it is to publish always. This is the point of synchronization with the uh, server. So when I synchronize things, writing uh, deletion of the link like that, I click on finish and the publication takes place and you can see the link reappears as expected on the website and in Polarian, of course. So in Polarian, you need to refresh to see that and you see this link is back. Okay. And just to show you the history a bit more now, you can see that on our object, we have all these changes that have occurred uh, because we have <laughs> added the link, deleted the link, then uh, and so on. Okay, I think I've uh, made a quick tour of the main features. The rest is more about how to configure things. You can pretty much configure many things, especially the kinds of links you want to allow when you drag and drop something. Uh, you can re be very uh, specific on what type of link you want to support when you drag and drop on a function or when you drag and drop on a component or whatever. You can really configure everything on a fine grain level. Uh, both in Capella and online, but uh, that's a bit more uh, tedious to demo, so I, I won't uh, do it today. Mm -hmm.